Hey folks, welcome back to Rotten Reels Reviews, audio review number 42. Still no answer to life, the universe, and everything, I'm afraid. And after my women's in prison reviews via rottenreelsreview.blogspot.com, I needed a break from that. Well, the folks of Full Moon Pictures came back to Bucharest, Romania for yet another vampire picture. Ted Nicolau, writer and director of the Subspecies Quadrilogy, managed to film before Subspecies, but characters got muddled into the latter project of Subspecies 4. Not exactly sure why. This is Vampire Journal. Now, the timeline is based, this occurs before Subspecies 4, Bloodstorm. The vampire in that series, Radul Vladislas, had met his final end. Or did he? And now his maid vampire, or child, or sired, Ash, is our head nuisance. There can be only one... Um, sorry, wrong franchise. Although equally baffling. Yeah. The story revolves around two vampires, and doesn't every one of them do that? One is racked with guilt, being one of the undead, and seeks to dispatch them with a blade in the form of decapitation. The other is an amoral, soulless creature that delights at playing with his food and instilling fear prior to feeding. I guess it's a bit like adding coke to your Jack Daniels. I don't have a clue. Zachary, played by David Gunn, lives in the unending lifespan that has brought him nothing but blood and torment. Meanwhile, Ash, played by Jonathan Morris, is a master vampire who owns a nightclub and assists in presenting all around the world. Both creatures of the night fall for the same beautiful pianist. Yes, I said pianist, you sick bastards. Named Sophia, played by Kristen Sierra. Predictably, their ideals and ways of life rub each other the wrong way, but they continue this odd game of cat and mouse back and forth. Ash points out his former wife to Zachary, and clearly is giving a chance to belong amongst his flock, so long as he doesn't poach the pianist. And as we all well know, competition goes so well between men over a woman. Zachary, however, is almost as whiny and bitter as Louis from Interview with a Vampire. I mean, seriously, this guy just whimpers on and on and on. Flashbacks are a bit of a theme with this guy, as Ash, in some far back time in the powdered wig era, fed and drained Rebecca, the love of Zachary's unlife. He has made of this a pack, a blood oath, you might say. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, I'm sorry to slay his fellow vampires whenever and wherever he finds them. And once again, I have to give comment to the props people of this series, since the subspecies was in, just, uh, created. And working on such a minuscule budget as they have, they managed to produce a wicked-looking broadsword named Laertes. Now, perhaps somebody was a big Homer fan, or possibly a fan of Hamlet. Who can truly say? Yeah, I, I know, I, I have read some classical literature. Go figure. Now, while I feel the story has been played out to death, and not exactly what I would call an original idea, I love the camera work, the lighting. Uh, the musical score, I felt, was amazing, and frankly, as low budget as Nicola is forced to work with, this film is very impressive. With an ancient city like Bucharest, uh, with the architecture alone as you add this into your story, the film maintains a gothic feel. The characters feel true to the nature of the beast, if you will. My complaints were pretty simple, actually. The script seemed light. I mean, you have a simple love triangle story arc, but it didn't get the love that it deserved. Felt like there should always have been more. Shockingly enough, the nudity follows a basis for the seduction or the feeding, and I don't think it really went over the top per se, but there is a fair amount of it. Definitely not one for the kiddies. You know, erotic vampire tale, you kind of expect this sort of thing to be happening. Nikolai also seems to be a huge fan of letting every film end on a down note in one facet or another. 
Admittedly, I didn't see the happy, fluffy, bunning ending with a tale of vampires, but damn it, man. Just once, end on a tender note now and then. Now, what I don't get is these are clearly different storylines that are linked. I mean, it was obvious that Nicola had a plan to do something more adept with the fourth subspecies, using some of the characters from the flick, but unfortunately due to the variance of time, there's almost an eight-year gap between these films being made, it just felt clunky, confusing, and kind of left me, you know, shaking my head a little. Once again, this project is produced by Charles Band, founder and creator of uh, Full Moon Pictures. The funniest aspect is I was looking through and trying to find out who made these amazing props. And the gentleman in question is known as Ilona Popa. And I was just going through his filmography going, why isn't this man getting better stuff? And, you know, you're going, so you got stuff like The Clockmaker, The Secret Kingdom, The Werewolf Reborn, and then Christopher Lambert's Beowulf, and Dragon World, The Legend Continues, with this hideous puppet slash dragon, and Adrian Paul being a bad guy. And don't get me wrong, I'm this weird Nazi ass Blood Creek film. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, hey, you know, you take the work where you get it. It's just, I was sitting there going, wow, after that amazing bronze sword, this is where we finish off? A uh, special effects course also done by Mark Rappaport of the, uh, uh, well, Rappaport Special Effects. Yeah, I know, that one was pretty complex, right? To sum it up, this film is a pleasant addition to the growing vampire subgenre. Our vampires did not twinkle. They had no emo angst, nor were they whiny, bitchy, well, at least not too terribly. A clever intro, some great effects, and dialogue was a little stagnant, I grant you, but um, you have to expect the over-the-top performance for what is basically an egocentrical an egotistical creature that doesn't hold any morality to society. You know, kind of like our current administration. Oh, yes, he got another one in. Yeah. And with that, folks, I've got nothing else. I um, hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you're uh, digging any of these. If you got some suggestions, hey, feel free. Shoot them my way. Hit me up on Facebook under Rotten Reels Reviews. You can catch me under Twitter. Uh, you know, smoke signal, maybe Morse code, I don't know. But you folks have a good one. Take it easy. All right, bye.